Hey guys, welcome back to another Harbour Unboxed video. Recently, I put together a video comparing the new NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1050 Ti against AMD's Radeon RX 464GB and RX 470 graphics cards. In terms of pricing, the 1050 Ti pretty well slots in between those two AMD products, and while better value than the RX 464GB, by a country mile I might add, uh, if you're willing to spend a little bit more, then we recommended the RX 470 as it's a seriously good buy. However, if you can only afford to spend around, say, 150 US or 220 dollar dues, then the GTX 1050 Ti appears to be the best value option at this price point. Or is it? Recently, when doing a bit of poking around for secondhand deals on eBay and some PC forums, I noticed a few Radeon R9 290 graphics cards were going for what I felt were very, very low prices. Some sold for as little as $150, and we are talking Australian dollars here. Hell, that's GTX 750 Ti money. Still, for the most part, 290 seem to be fetching around $200, and that's still very cheap for what is essentially an R9 390. Well, it is an R9 390 with 4GB of VRAM, but let's not enter that rabbit hole. The R9 390 is currently retailing for around $400, which makes these $200 290s all the more surprising. With Nvidia's new GTX 1050 Ti selling for at least 220 Aussie, this made me think, which is faster? I then spent another second or two mulling that one over before realising the answer was obviously the R9 290. But, how much faster is the R9 290, I hear you ask? Well, let's find out, and while we're at it, why not throw in an RX 470 as well? Good idea. For this test I've selected 6 new games, all of which were benchmarked at 1080p on a Core i5 rig. To avoid any controversy on this one, uh, what am I saying, this is a GPU comparison. Controversy is all part of the fun. Anyway, in an effort to keep most happy, we've ditched the Core i3 rig for a more middle of the road option in the Core i5 6400. So not a Core i7, not a Core i3. Hopefully I'm sitting safe on the fence for this one. As always, the latest drivers have been used for testing, and since I ran these benchmarks over the weekend, all the numbers are nice and fresh. Finally, I'm not interested in how these graphics cards compare in games released in 2013, the year the R9 290 hit shelves. I want to know what it has to offer gamers today when compared to brand new GPUs of similar cost, such as the RX 470 and GTX 1050 Ti. Right, so let's get to the good stuff then. First up we have Deus Ex Mankind Divided, the game every FX touting, radon rocking, free sync boasting fanboy will demanding reviewers use for the next 10 years. I kid of course. Anyway, here we find some very interesting results, very exciting results for those in the market for a secondhand R9 290. AMD's old second gen GCN architecture still has some fight in her yet. The 290 came out swinging, delivering an average of 66 FPS, making it 16% faster than the RX 470. Not only that, but it was almost 80% faster than the GTX 1050 Ti. I know that this is an AMD supported title, but damn, that's a real pantsing. Once again, it looks like the right gear for this war is the R9 290. Here the R9 290 was 17% faster than the RX 470, and 54% faster than the GTX 1050 Ti. And that there is a very impressive win for the old 290, as this is a title well optimised for Nvidia hardware. For testing F1 2016, we used the built-in benchmark, with heavy rain enabled and like Max Verstappen, the 290 had no trouble delivering a strong result in wet conditions. Although the 290 did fall a few frames behind the RX 470 in this title, the performance was still mighty impressive, and enough to see the GTX 1050 trail by a 34% margin when comparing the average frame rate results. Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, the game literally no one's playing anymore, was tested using the maxed out quality settings with SMAA enabled. Here the R9 290 was again a few frames slower than the RX 470, but over 50% faster than the GTX 1050 Ti, so a strong result for AMD's high-end 2013 graphics card. For those of you that find COD too slow paced, we have Titanfall 2. And for those that want to play Titanfall 2 at well over 60fps without breaking the bank, we have the R9 290. The R9 290 pulled ahead of the RX 470, rendering 12% more frames. It was also 37% faster than the GTX 1050 Ti, for good measure. Not playing either Infinite Warfare or Titanfall 2? Well, we don't blame you. Battlefield 1 doesn't need space or mech suits. It has good graphics and quality gameplay on its side. It also has DirectX 12 support, though that feature is a little questionable right now. The Radon graphics cards were tested using DirectX 12, while the GeForce card, the GTX 1050 Ti in other words, was tested using DirectX 11. 
DX12 does suffer from larger dips in performance, so for now those minimums do look a bit dodgy. Still, if you switch either the RX470 or R9 290 over to DirectX 11, the average frame rate looks much the same while the minimum is much improved. So you might be wondering why do we test AMD cards with DirectX 12 then? Well, because if we don't, we're somehow Nvidia shills, and since Nvidia aren't paying us, why take the heat, right? Speaking of heat, let's check out how much juice these GPUs suck down. Hmm, yeah, the catch. <laughs> the uh, 290 is a bit of a power pig. Total system consumption reached 330 watts. Uh, that's certainly not extreme, but it's well over double what the GTX 1050 Ti configuration hit. It's also over 100 watts more than the RX 470 for a similar level of performance. Thankfully, to combat the inevitable high thermal load that comes with that kind of consumption, most 290 graphics cards feature huge heat sinks and array of fans. Finally, a look at efficiency by comparing power consumption and average frame rate performance. I know most of you guys aren't into scatter plots here, so an easy to digest bar graph has been included. As you can see overall, the 290 was on average 8% faster than the RX 470, but pushed power consumption 55% higher in the process. Not an ideal scenario, but we kinda knew that was coming given the 290's well documented tendency to gobble up those watts. I probably shouldn't admit this, but that was fun. I have fond memories of the Radeon R9 290 series. Back in October of 2013, the mind-blowingly complex R9 290X landed, boasting 2,816 cores and a $550 asking price to match. It was a big middle finger to Nvidia at the time, taking their Titan at nearly half the price, and as expected, this gutsy play provoked a response from Nvidia. That response was the GTX 780 Ti, but once again stealing Nvidia's thunder was the 290 series, as AMD came out with the vanilla 290. Priced at just $400, it didn't just take out the GTX 780, but to a degree also the 290X, offering similar performance at a fraction of the price. Ah, memory lane. Now, exactly three years later, I find myself once again recommending the R9 290 as one of the best value options for gamers. So then, the Volcanic Islands still have some fire left in them yet. See what I did there? Yeah, the nerdy guys will get it. Comparing the GTX 1050 Ti and R9 290 is a bit like a head-to-head -head battle between a price and a hammer. The 290 was hands down faster, 54% uh, faster on average in fact. Still, fuel efficiency isn't great. Total consumption was almost three times higher. Uh, that's a staggering figure. As significant as that figure is though, I'm sure many gamers will be able to live with it. All that extra performance from the R9 290 at the same price is probably too difficult to pass up. Given what we've seen here, if power consumption isn't of great concern, then I feel the R9 290 provides gamers with the most bang for their buck. Again, these graphics cards are readily available on the second-hand market for around $200 Aussie, sometimes even less, and that actually makes them a bit cheaper than the GTX 1050 Ti. Uh, if pricing is similar in your region, then I highly recommend checking out the R9 290. Well, that's all from me on this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed the comparison. And if you know of any other really good second-hand graphics card buys, let me know in the comments below and I'll do a bit of investigating and compare it to a current generation GPU to see which one delivers the most bang for your buck. Uh, with that, I'm your host, Steve, and I will catch you guys next time.